guys, it's 5.20 in the morning. We are headed into Boston to see my multiple myeloma specialist. Once every six months, I head into Boston and monthly I see my local oncologist. The sun is pretty this morning. That's the Charles River. I'd much rather be canoeing or kayaking than heading into Boston. We're almost at the hospital. Well, it's 6.30 in the morning, and we made it on time. Oh, we stop at the Healing Garden when we come here. It's so pretty. I find it very peaceful having this garden here. Hey guys, as you could tell at the beginning of my video, I had my appointment in Boston with my multiple myeloma specialist. So I want to give a quick update of what's been going on the last couple months. I have my little notes because I tend to forget what I want to say. So back in December, I asked to be put back on cholestyramine, which is actually a drug for high cholesterol, but it also helps with GI issues. It's, um, it binds up um, all the excess bile so that you're not getting sick. And I'm happy to report that that has been successful. It's helped me tremendously. The only issue with the cholestyramine is that it can also bind you up and you can have the opposite problem. My gastro doctor was able to get me the cholestyramine in a little canister so I could measure it out versus the big packets, you know, trying to measure out a half a dose. So we're still kind of playing with that so I'm not being bound up, but it's definitely been a lot better than what I've been dealing with for all these years. However, back a couple cycles ago, they now have a generic for the Revlimid and my insurance company had me go on the generic. At the top of my head, I can't remember the name of the generic. I know it begins with an L, but I'll put that information down below. As soon as I got on the generic, I started getting sick again to my stomach, even with the cholestyramine. I talked to the CVS specialty pharmacist. He told me that the main ingredient is exactly the same but the fillers are different. So he suggested I talk to my oncologist, which I did, and they just switched me back to the Revlimid. So I just finished my first cycle and things are finally settling down as far as my GI tract is concerned. Another issue that I'm having that is really extreme are leg and foot cramps. I'm not talking just a little tiny leg cramp. These are, um, absolutely horrible. I mean, they wake me up at night. I'm not getting much sleep. I can be out walking in the woods and it can happen. Literally both legs are having, you know, Charlie horses, spasms, um, my feet, my toes, absolutely painful. And then after it happens, your legs are hurting for a long time because of what you've done to the muscle. I have tried all kinds of things and nothing has helped. So yesterday my oncologist in Boston recommended that I try electrolyte powder. So right now I, I just started it so until I know if it works um, I don't want to mention too much about it because if it doesn't help me then why bother talking about it. So I'm hopeful that it will help. If it is I will definitely let you guys know. The neuropathy in my feet and in my thumbs and my fingertips has increased as well. Some people do get neuropathy from Revlimid. Mine originally was caused by the Velcade and that's why they had me go off it. I'm not having the pain, thank God, but I know so many people suffer with pain from the neuropathy. Mine is numbness and I don't think there's anything they can do for that. So that's a little discouraging. They did approve Evushield, if I'm saying that properly, for multiple myeloma patients. So I did have those two injections. And I also had two cortisone injections. I had the injection in my hip to help with the bursitis. Um, oh, this little chipmunk just came by me. And also I had an ultrasound guided injection into the bottom of my spine. Not sure if it's the SI joint, it might be. I'm still going to physical therapy, but my insurance is limiting how many times I can go for that. But when you do have multiple myeloma that affects your bones, when you start having these pains like that, it's very alarming. So I'm happy that it's not the multiple myeloma, but it is discouraging to have this pain all the time. The shots have helped a little bit, but I was really hoping they would help 
a lot more. My Boston oncologist is the one that sets up my treatment plan and then it's carried out monthly at my local Dana-Farber by me. So he's not making any changes. We have discussed what future um, medications they would use, but we're hoping to use the Revlimid for as long as possible, even though I do have these side effects. You know, who knows what type of side effects I'll have with the others. But until my numbers go up further, I'm going to be staying on the Revlimid. Right now, it's been like a roller coaster. Um, my IgG and Lambda keep doing this, but um, my M spike has been staying pretty steady. But if it goes up a small percentage more, that's when we will have to do the changes. When I go to Boston, I get my labs back a lot quicker than the local Dana Fiber. So my IgG and Lambda both went up a little bit, but they're going to consider that stable. So I'm just waiting for the M spike, but I'm sure that that is probably about the same. So that is my newest multiple myeloma update. I hope everybody's doing fine. I'm sorry that I get behind on answering a lot of the messages um, for other myeloma patients that write me. I really try my best. I've been having some issues with receiving messages. So if you did send me a message and I didn't get it, please send it to me again and I will do my best to answer each and every one of you. So thank you to all my subscribers and all the other people who are watching my multiple myeloma journey. I truly appreciate you guys checking in on me. Peace, love, and joy. Always be humble. Always be kind. See you next time. Bye for now.